All right. Hey, Phil Long. How you doing today? Dr. Scott Uhall coming at you at another Tuesday afternoon virtual coffee chat. I'd like to say thanks for your time for getting online. I think we've got a great presentation today. We're talking about holiday turkey safety. And then I've got a, a nice leftover recipe that I'd like to share with you. And, uh, you can make sure you get you, know, you use all that turkey that you got cooking this weekend. So um, appreciate everybody getting online and let's let's talk about some turkeys. Oops, let me change this. There we go. Again, in today's coffee chat, we're going to talk about uh, some holiday turkey safety because uh, poultry is very susceptible to uh, bacterial infection, even more so than red meats and even fish. So we want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to be reminiscence of back when I was in academics. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of turkey and Thanksgiving. Um, uh, they were not mutually inclusive when all this got started. And we'll talk about some turkey gifts, uh, how to make sure that you don't cross-contaminate some of the foods that you're prepping uh, for Thanksgiving in this next week. And then we'll share a little recipe, uh, some autumn spice turkey salad, which is a little heart-healthy uh, treat that you can do with that leftover turkey. So enjoy your quarter hour of wellness power. Uh, and as usual, again, medical doctors and doctors of osteopathy, the, they're clinical physicians. Uh, they can use prescription drugs and they use medical procedures to help keep you well. And my doctor of philosophy is all about lifestyle change, behavior change. And really at the end of the day, we want to try to promote and provide uh, the people that we work with um, a means to improve their quality of life. And that's what we're all about. So um, thankful for everybody for chopping in today. And as usual, I want to say thank you to Kangaroo Coffee for being our sponsor for the virtual coffee chats. It's been a great relationship uh, and looking for more to come. So now, as usual, we've got our disclaimer. I'll go through quickly, real quick through this is that um, if you're on our health insurance plan here at Phil Long, you can get your annual physical done right through our Care Here clinic. You get your blood draw, review that information with the clinician, and you can even actually get a discount, uh, a monthly discount on your premium for doing wellness. If you'd like to know more about that, please get a hold of me. If you're not on our health care plan, um, your plan year may be coming to an end at the end of uh, December. So if you haven't gotten your annual physical done, and you've already met your deductible for the year, make sure that you get all that stuff done so it's less out-of-pocket expense for yourself. All right, so with that, uh, let's get after it. Let's talk about uh, the history of Thanksgiving and Turkey. But really, the first Thanksgiving took place in the autumn of about 1621. Remember, Columbus discovered the New World in 1492. Uh, so it was a couple, almost... 150 years after that, that we colonized or started to colonize the new world. Uh, but this first Thanksgiving get together, it was actually um, more of a social event, a party. It lasted three days and it was between the pilgrims of Plymouth, you've heard the landing at Plymouth Rock, and the local Native American Indian tribe, the Wampiowag. I got that wrong again. I practice it. Wamp a Noag tribe to celebrate the colonists' first successful harvest. Now, um, the pilgrims had tried to colonize a couple times, or excuse me, tried to get a harvest a couple times before, but it wasn't very successful. So the 1621 harvest really gave them a lot of uh, additional food to share. Now, at this first get together, there were roughly uh, 90 Native Americans, including the chief, Massasoit, who attended along with 50 colonists, and the English governor, uh, a gentleman named William Bradford. And what, what really brought this first Thanksgiving together, believe it or not, it was a gathering and an agreement uh, to cement a military alliance between the Native American and the new, uh, the new pilgrims, the new colonists, uh, especially once the Native Americans saw um, a musket rifle and then also the cannons that were on the ships that the colonists had. And they said, hey, you guys got better stuff than we have, let's be friends. And that's kind of how this all happened. It was an alliance and allegiance uh, between Native Americans and the first colonists. Now, interestingly enough, uh, turkey was not on uh, the original um, uh, menu, so to speak. Uh, uh, the Native Americans, they, they harvested five deers, and then uh, the colonists, they brought in fowl, and then all of the uh, crop from uh, the very well, uh, the very good harvest of 1621. Uh, one thing I do want to make uh, a note of is that um, women were not allowed 
at the celebration. Um, they actually did all the cooking and all this, uh, but they were not uh, invited to participate in, in, in the celebration. And um, that's kind of part of what was going on until the women's suffrage movement in the 1920s, which gave them the right to vote and a lot of other things. So just kind of wanted to point that out. Uh, we've come a long way over the years. Now, uh, history again, uh, George Washington, he was actually the very first person to really put a Thanksgiving day onto things. Uh, in October of 1789, and again, we came a, became a country in 1776, but George Washington felt that there should be a, a national day of thanks uh, as a result of um, the almighty God seeing that America became a new country, made it through the revolution, and actually had established a constitutional government. And he thought that was a great thing to do. So he made a decree, and that was really the first uh, Thanksgiving day, if you will, November 26th of 1789. Now, turkey really was not a prime staple on the diet until much later, a, a, a magazine editor named Sarah Josephina Hale uh, touted the benefits of turkey as a big staple and actually lobbied the government um, to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. And Abraham Lincoln in 1863 thought that was a pretty good idea. And he made the first official Thanksgiving holiday, but it was only a one-time event. It wasn't a national holiday like we had now. Um, it actually was until um, F uh, FDR in 1946 actually established Abe Lincoln's resolution and then made Thanksgiving a national holiday where we get days off and we're allowed to be with our family. So um, it took a number of years for Thanksgiving to come around to really manifest itself into the celebration that we see today. But I'm sure glad that they did that because uh, Thanksgiving is a wonderful time to be with family. Now, before we get into the good stuff, I've got a real quick trivia question and you can put your answer in the chat box. We're going to raffle off a temperature gauge that you can use to make sure your tur turkey is well cooked. But what is the what's the minimum temperature, internal temperature that a turkey uh, needs to reach to make sure that you get uh, kill all the bacteria and all that other stuff on there? Sit that in the in the chat room and we'll take a look at that at the end of the presentation. Now, what are some benefits of turkey? Well. Um, it's much lower in saturated fat than red meats, but it has really almost the same uh, quality protein content. So if you're worried about cardiovascular disease or you have high cholesterol, um, integrating turkey into your diet might be a great thing to do. Turkey is also loaded with tryptophan. That's an essential amino acid. If you remember us talking about that uh, essential amino acid you must get from your diet. And uh, what tryptophan actually helps your body do is it helps it make melatonin which is a neurotransmitter that helps with sleep. And it also helps with the neurotransmitter serotonin, uh, which is a mood enabler. So um, if you're kind of unhappy, grumpy, maybe throw a little bit of turkey in there. You're having a hard time sleeping, maybe throw a little bit of turkey there in your dinner. Um, turkey is also good, like, good for fighting cardiovascular disease. I made reference to that because, again, it's very low in fat and especially saturated fat. And then uh, there's higher levels of selenium and potassium in Turkey, and that actually helps with your immune response, uh, your immune function. So again, this day in COVID, you know, get a little bit of turkey in there, strengthen up your immune system. There's other benefits of turkey, but those are some of the big ones I wanted to point out uh, over things like red meats and fish. And those have benefits too, uh, but that's not part of today's conversation. So get yourself a little turkey, help you sleep better, increase your mood or enhance your mood and your immune system. So let's go on. Um, let's talk about some handling and safety tips when you're dealing with turkey. And first of all, uh, you got your turkey. It was frozen solid as a brick. And keep it that way until you're ready to thaw it. And the best way to do it is to thaw it in your refrigerator. If you can put it in a pan, cover it, and then let it thaw um, that way is, is really the best. If, if you're pressed for time, Get yourself a, a leak-proof bag, put cold water in there, dump it out about every half hour. It's going to take you still a good part of the day to thaw out that turkey, even if you're using uh, the cold water technique. Uh, you can microwave thaw foods, and I would encourage you to look at the directions and follow them specifically on how to thaw foods in the microwave. 
Uh, but here is one thing. If the, if the turkey's too big, you're getting an 18, 20, 22 pound turkey. You might not want to thaw it in the microwave. It could very well be too big where you've thawed some and you've cooked other parts. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but do thaw it. And then handling the turkey, we've got four little concepts we want you to follow. The clean, separate, cook, and chill idea. And what I mean by that is clean your hands. Again, poultry, for whatever reason, it very easily develops bacteria on it. So you want to wash your hands. Wash your hands with hot soap and water. Uh, when you grab the turkey, when you're grabbing a knife, um, if you grab the turkey, try to wash your hands in between grabbing the knife or a fork. Um, do not use a countertop to, to put a turkey on. Make sure that you use um, a cutting board and um, do your very best, again, to wash your hands when you're interacting with that turkey at every op opportunity. Now, separate. What I mean by that is don't, don't cross-contaminate your food. Uh, wash down your cutting board. Um, if you have a wood cutting board, those are fine. But once they start to get um, chops in them or the, the surface starts to become um, non-solid, uh, start to get those chops in it, I'd consider getting rid of your cutting board and actually go to a plastic one better. It's easier to clean. It's easier uh, to keep debris out of there than a, a wooden cutting board that's getting old. Again, like I said, wash your knives, wash your utensils. Uh, you know, if you go through a bunch of utensils preparing things, that's fine. Just throw it in the dishwasher. And then cook it to the right temperature. And to make sure that you get poultry uh, absolutely clear of the bacterial issue, you must cook it to 165 degrees, all right, to get that going. Um, beef, it's not quite as much. It's 145 degrees. Fish is a little different. Uh, but make sure you get your poultry up to 165 internal degrees. And then, again, one thing I want to mention, uh, a lot of times we put stuffing inside the carcass. I don't really recommend that. If you can cook the stuffing in and of itself after the turkey is done, then you can put it in there, uh, make it give an aesthetic appeal. But if you are going to cook the uh, stuffing with the turkey, put the stuffing in right prior to you putting the, uh, the, the, the turkey in the oven. Don't let the stuffing sit there for a half hour inside the turkey and then do it. That could increase your likelihood of a, a bacterial situation. So I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And then again, chill the food. If you're cooking at home, you've got about two hours from the time that you cook the food till the time it needs to be refrigerated. Uh, if you're outside and it's humid or if it's about 90 degrees or more, you only actually have about an hour uh, from a safe zone, from cooking, prepping, to getting the food uh, eaten and then in the refrigerator. So be very cognizant about that time uh, and make sure that you follow those because, again, if you get a foodborne illness like a, a bacterium, uh, clostridium perfringes or something like that, it's going to mess your gut up and it's, it's not pleasant by any means to get a, a foodborne infection. Now, what do we do with the leftovers? Again, a turkey sandwich is great. But once you put the mayonnaise and the cheese and all that stuff on there, um, it might not be the best choice, although I love them. I love turkey sandwiches. It's part of Thanksgiving. But here we have a nice fancy recipe that's it's it complies with my 40 40 or 40 30 30 rule of ratio of carbohydrates to proteins to fats. I like 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. And you can see by the middle uh, pie chart that it's pretty close to that. And if you wanted to make your spiced turkey salad, you get a couple of uh, couple of cups of leftover turkey. And I would encourage you to try the dark meat. Um, it's got more of your essential amino acids in it than the white meat turkey. But the white meat turkey does have less saturated fat. So, again, there's benefits to each kind of meat. Get a small apple, some cranberries, some celery, a carrot. Cut up an onion. Greek yogurt is a great um, fill instead of using mayonnaise. Uh, tremendously reduces your fat calories and it increases your protein content too. Uh, Dijon mustard's great, very low in fat. Cinnamon, nutmeg, salt, pepper, those are spices. They have no calories to them. You mix that all up and then you can see on the right what autumn spice turkey salad looks like. And instead of using the bread uh, and making a sandwich, you could dip that and use vegetables. Uh, but if you do want to make a sandwich, you could heat up uh, the salad and have it be kind of the meat portion of a sandwich. 
So there's a variety that you can do with the autumn spice turkey salad. But if you make it and prep it right, it's significantly lower in fat uh, than, again, a turkey sandwich or uh, using gravy and reheating leftovers. You know, I love mashed potatoes and gravy. But again, a lot of saturated fat and um, a hard clogging uh, goodness in, 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 in brown gravy. So again, maybe try something a little bit different. Um, I would love to hear a, of a, a recipe that you might have using turkey if you'd like to share that with me over the week. But um, again, autumn spice turkey salad, can't go wrong, hot or cold. So kind of tidying up some information. We will not be having a coffee chat next week during Thanksgiving. Uh, we want to let everybody have a chance to get all their work done so that you can enjoy Thursday. It's one of the holidays that we get off here at Phil Long. Uh, thank you very much, Phil Long, for that kind, uh, generous thing. But, but again, we get to spend time with family. And I would encourage you to do that, even though COVID's going around, you know, do your social distancing, but enjoy each other's company over Thanksgiving. And we'll be coming back in December uh, with a month long Christmas theme for virtual coffee chats. And again, on behalf of the corporate communication team, Gina Sacrapani, myself, Will Dillinger, Randy Gratishar, and the PLD group, thank you very much for everything that you do for Phil Long. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's see what we got in the chat. Um, we got like 15 responses. Let me see what I can bring up there. But uh, yeah, 160. Oh, that was too easy. 165, 165. Hey, Amanda, happy Thanksgiving to everyone else too. Let's see. Oh yeah, you guys would smoke that. It looks like we're going to have a serious raffle for the temperature gauge. But yeah, it's 165 minimum. Uh, for the internal temperature of a, uh, of a chicken, of a turkey. So anyways, as usual, everyone, God bless, be safe, and enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you soon.